All right, so my wife and I went to Puerto Rico on our honeymoon in 2015. It was beautiful. It was right before Christmas time, and the beaches were lovely. Yes, we swam in the water. Why do you think we swam in the ocean in December? It's summertime. Pretty much all the time, yeah, because of the, the location and the proximity to the equator, the weather there is usually always warm and tropical. Is that what you were going to say too? All right, good deal. So that's looking out at um, San Juan, and further out you go to Old San Juan, which is a very picturesque place, lots of good photo ops there. That's a Puerto Rican license tag. On the, the thing that looks kind of like a castle on the back, that's a moto. It was a fortress built in the 1500s by the Spaniards. There's a Puerto Rican flag and the American flag. Note that Puerto Rico is a U.S. territory. It's a U.S. territory. There's some other pictures of what it looks like on the island of Puerto Rico. Some of the homes now have solar panels on the top of the roofs. We're seeing that more and more these days. That's great. That's, uh, you can't see it really well, but that's a baseball stadium right there. Because baseball is the most popular sport in Puerto Rico. Another good fact to write down, baseball is the most popular sport in Puerto Rico. All right. This was on Christmas Eve. Perfect arcing rainbow right on the beach. And that's my lovely wife. I don't think she knew I was about to take a picture. <laughs> it's actually a double rainbow. You can see it better on my computer, but kind of see it on the projector. Bienvenidos a Puerto Rico. Make note of these fast facts. Hoy vamos a Puerto Rico, la Isla del Encanto. That means the Island of Enchantment. That's what Puerto Rico is known as. Puerto Rico looks like that. That's where it's located. It's kind of a small island nation. Hola, soy Puerto Rico. Yo vivo aquí. That means, hi, I'm Puerto Rico, I live here. If you're watching this video at home, pause the screen to take notes. Puerto Rico means rich port. It's a territory of the United States since 1898. The capital is San Juan. It's nicknamed La Isla del Encanto, or the Island of Enchantment. The most popular sport is baseball, and the governor is Ricardo Rosellón. They have a governor. They they function politically like a state, but they don't have all of the rights and amenities of being a fully fledged state. On November 19th, 1493, Columbus landed on the island and found people. Yes, people were already living on the island. They were the Taino indigenous people called them Indians. This statue commemorates the spot where the explorers first met the Taino people. That's my actual picture there. So who were the Taino people? Two major tribes inhabited the Caribbean at, the, at this time, the Taino and the Caribe, or the Caribe. The Carib were cannibals. You can remember that by, you know, Carib starts with a C and cannibal starts with a C. But the Taino treat everybody peacefully. The Taino were pretty peaceful people, although they were not cannibals. The Taino inhabited the island of Puerto Rico. Yeah, there's some Taino symbols. There's a frog there that sounds like a bird. It makes a sound. It sounds like it's saying coqui, 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 coqui. 
Let me see if I can. Uh, I might. I may still have an audio recorder on my phone. Let me see. Hold on. Here you go. You hear it? Sounds like a bird, doesn't it? That's two cookies. Pretty cool, huh? Then there's some other symbols here. The um, caracol, snail, and the sol, the sun. And an uh, interesting looking baby. <laughs> Italian people have very interesting looking babies. Big old eyes. <laughs> This is a replica of a Taino village. They lived in thatched roof huts called boillos. Or bohios. This is, this is all you know, okay? This is your life. You're living on an island. There's some crazy cannibals out there, but other than that, things are pretty peaceful. It's a good life. The weather's great. And one day, your world is going to change forever. This is your home, this is all you know. One day, you and some friends look out at the ocean and you see this. What in the world is that? What does that mean, right? That was, uh, that was Columbus and his crew coming to the island for the first time. I mean, that's not the actual picture, that's from a movie. <laughs> Screenshot from a movie. Yeah, they didn't have cameras back then, you know, if you did not know this already. The Spanish eventually conquered the tribes. They established governments, fortresses, and plantations to create trade and business. To put it simply, the Spaniards wanted trade. They wanted to find resources and then bring those resources back to Spain to trade with other countries. So they pretty much left the people alone. They did do some conquering and some warfare and things like that, but they wanted trade. They wanted commerce, right? The English, on the other hand, wanted land. They wanted to expand their territory. There was a problem with that. There were already people on the land. So diseases helped wipe out a lot of those people. And when they came back, they found the lands were mostly empty. But then they started setting up colonies. Subsequently, in people's kitchens, that's what the game lands were, hunting grounds for the Native Americans. They were at places they went for food, for hunting. Imagine if someone set up a colony in your kitchen. How would you feel about that? That's kind of weird. Other places they would set up um, colonies or fortresses were in people's churches on holy grounds. Grounds that what were considered sacred grounds um, so you, like for example, here in North Carolina, Hickory Nut Gorge in um, Western North Carolina in the mountains, it's a very beautiful place and it was considered sacred ground by all of the tribes that were in that area, especially the Cherokee. So anyways, it'd be really weird if someone just all of a sudden set up a brand new colony inside your church or inside your kitchen, but that's essentially what happened here in the United States. The Spaniards are not totally innocent either with the things they did, but um, it wasn't as bad, I'll say that. It wasn't as bad. That's just my personal opinion. All right, so after the Spanish conquest, Christopher Columbus first named the island San Juan Bautista in honor of St. John the Baptist. After the Spaniards discovered gold in the river, they started calling the city Puerto Rico. Today, the area is known as San Juan. So San Juan was the Puerto Rico. It was the, the port. I've actually been to the Puerto Rico before. 
a good picture. And that was the port. But then eventually the entire island was nicknamed Puerto Rico, and then that, that's its, its name today. So there it is. That's the original entrance into the old city. That right there is the Puerto Rico. <laughs> El Morro, built in 1539 to defend against sea attackers. It started as one tower. The original tower was here, and it held water. And then they built onto it from that. It's got three different levels. And you can see the city of Old San Juan in the back. They filmed scenes for a movie called Casi Casi up in this uh, uh, yard here and in front of a motor. A motor has three levels. So across the bay there, you see there's another cannon outpost. The original interest of the city is way back this way. If any ships tried to enter the bay, both the outpost and a morro would open fire and tag team the invaders. So that's, and people tried to invade a lot, especially the English, they tried to invade a lot. Anytime they did, both the outpost there and a morro would open fire and just boom, 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 and just take them out. San Juan Bay was a sheltered harbor that had high political and military value in the days of sailing ships. The easiest course to cross the Atlantic from Europe to the Americas was to go south to go south to the coast of Africa. Place your ship in the dependable trade winds and sail due west to the Caribbean. The trade winds and wealth of the Caribbean islands in colonial times made this harbor a target. El Morro was built to defend against sea attackers. And that's from the National Park Service. On December 10, 1898, a Treaty of Paris was signed. This ended the Spanish-American War. Spain released control of some of its territories. One of those territories was Puerto Rico. The price for all of the territories was $20 million. <laughs> Only 20 million. Let me show you my teacher's salary. That's a joke. That's clearly a joke. <laughs> El Yunque is the only rainforest national park that the U.S. owns. There are other types of national parks, but that's the only one that's a rainforest. El Yunque. Hiking there was pretty cool. It was fun. We saw uh, a waterfall and then just hiked around just to see what it was like. It was very beautiful. Really nice. We wanted to hike longer, but we had some other plans. We went scuba diving. That was fun. The Atlantic Ocean can be seen in the distance from El Yunque. That's La Mina Falls. We hiked to that. Old San Juan is the historic district, you write that down. So I want to ask you a question. In old old San Juan, why do you think the streets are so narrow? What's your guess? Yeah. Uh, yeah, didn't have cars back then. Plain and simple, the streets were smaller. They got around on either mainly by foot, but also like a horse and carriage or a horse and buggy. But Old San Juan is beautiful, so beautiful. This is the you can see the modern city of San Juan off in the background. So you see a Morro up front, and you see Old San Juan, and then behind that is the modern city of San Juan. 
This is uh, <coughs> El Catedral Met Metropolitana, Catedral, Metro Catedral Metropolitana Basilica de San Juan Bautista. This is the oldest church in America. It's a Catholic church. I went there um, for the last Sunday before Christmas. It was built in 1511. Originally, it was made from wood. Puerto Rican culture is a mix of Spanish, African, Taino, and other ethnic traditions. All right, Puerto Ricans call themselves Boricua, which comes from the Taino name for the, for the country, Boriquen, which means land of the valiant lord. Salsa is their traditional music. Salsa bands have lots of musicians. All right, next, El Coqui is a frog that makes a sound that's similar to a bird chirping. It's synonymous with Puerto Rico and has become the island's mascot. They're so small. They are they're very small. This is an ancient Taino glyph of the Coqui. I actually have a sticker that looks just like that on my bass guitar. La comida puertorriqueña, Puerto Rican food includes a lot of rice, beans, and plantains, as well as other fruits and vegetables. Man, I'm starting to get hungry. That looks so good. Really good stuff. Fresh fruits and veggies every day. The Puerto Rican diet is healthier than mainstream America. This is partly due to being a tropical country because you don't have to pick things before they're ripe, you just like go and get it. So if you want a mango, you just go pick a mango off of the tree you know, and eat it. It's good. Bananas also taste better when they've been when they ripen on the tree. I'm just saying. Like the flavor is just more full. Hurricane Irma hit Puerto Rico in September 2017. People were without power and water for many weeks. Thankfully, they have received a lot of aid and things have gotten better. Algunas preguntas, any questions? All right, there's some of my English credits. I use a lot of my own pictures, but four of these pictures at least I got from the internet. So there we go.